All right, guys. Tonight we are gonna we're gonna skate the line between just plain all cool geekdom and muy macho raw passion. Okay, not really, but it is gonna be a very cool video. We're gonna talk about recovering passwords tonight, and we're gonna do this in an extremely unsanctioned way. So before we get started, I've got to give my little legal spiel here. Okay, that uh, uh, use this at your own risk. Okay. Um, you're left up to your own morality as well. Uh, this is an extremely unsanctioned uh, method here. Uh, do not, I repeat, do not do this against a production system. Uh, towards the end, we're going to talk about what you can do if you do have to do it to a, a production system. But I'm telling you, do not do this to a production system. I am going to be concentrating on the... Uh, on the helpful aspects of this, on the useful aspects of this, and not the more nefarious aspects of this, uh, though I cannot control what you actually do with it yourself. Um, so the last thing I want, and, and the, the point of all this is I, I just don't want to get any lawsuits. You know, somebody saying, oh, uh, Sean told me to put this against my production system and sniff everybody's password so that I could do whatever I want with it. No, that's not what I'm saying. Anyway, on to the video. So, Let's take a, a second to discuss exactly what we're talking about here. You've got a very important application password or uh, account that you can't get the password to. So whether it's compiled in a legacy app and nobody has the code anymore, or whether it's with another group that's being uncooperative, or whatever, right? For some reason, you've got this application account and you need to, to get the password. Maybe you need to change it. Uh, you know, maybe you just need to, maybe somebody else changed it and you need to change it back because now a bunch of stuff is broken, right? So that, that's what we're going to go by now. Now, of course, you say, now, how can you do this if you don't have the password? Well, I assume that you've got an application in this case that's trying to log in using this, right? So maybe it's a linked server, right? And somebody changed the password on the server and you've got, you know, half a dozen things and you don't know what to do with them. So you just have to get back to the to the original password. So these things are going to be trying to log into the server. Uh, as, you know, every so often they're going to be trying to log into the server and they're going to be failing. But that's not the point. The point is they're, they're going to be is that, you know, once you get that login, then you're going to be able to uh, you're going to be able to, to do our technique. So I suppose let's go ahead and show you if I start up a new query here and I switch to a SQL account. Okay, so I've got my important app account, right? And let's see. No, I'm not going to tell you what the password is because we're hopefully going to discover that. Okay, so I'm logged in. Now that I'm logged in, okay, and I, and, and I know that I've got a successful login, I can come here, uh, and this is just a Ollie debugger. Um, it's, a, it's a nice free debugger. You can download it. It's only uh, a few megs. It's really not very big at all. And one of the reasons I like this is because not only can you search the whole memory, but you don't have to actually install anything. It comes in a zip. You just pull the files out of the zip and run it. So there's nothing to actually install. So you can come here to uh, ollydbg.de, and uh, here I'll go ahead and highlight this so it'll highlight on the film, and then uh, uh, just download it and you can use it. So I'll get rid of that. Now I'll open up my debugger. There. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to connect, I need to attach to the SQL process. And this is why you can't do this against a production system, because it will bring your production system down. Okay, You can no longer use your production system once you attach to this process. And I'm looking for SQL Server. Let me expand this a little bit. There it is, SQL Server right there. And I'll say Attach. We're waiting, we're waiting. You can see it's doing stuff down there. <clears throat> okay, so now we're attached to it, and you can see lots of neat little stuff coming up here on the screen. So for this debugger, I'm going to hit Alt-M to search the memory. And you could also have 
uh, come up into the menu to do that. So here's here is SQL Server's memory space, right? So I want to search it with Control B. Oops, I've got to click in here. Control B. Okay, so now I'm going to enter in the Unicode version of the uh, uh, of the account that I'm looking for, and I actually forgot what it's called. So I'll come in here and say important app account. Okay. So I come in here. So now I'm going to search the entire block for important app account. And that's the name of the account that's connected in there. And it's going to go through and it's going to it's going to search the memory. Alrighty, so we've got a result here. And it's a little bit messy, so what I like to do is I like to come in here and change this to text Unicode 64. There we go. Okay, so I've got this here, important app account. Uh, I don't see anything important there, so I'm going to hit Control L and go to the next location. Okay, and basically here I just kept hitting Control L until I found what I was looking for, and in that case it is right here, my password. So my password is clearly I want my, cla my blah, blah, I want my password bang bang. So the the important thing to notice here is that is that SQL stores username and passwords in uh, in memory in clear text, and it's relatively simple to sniff them out. So like I said, there are, there are many nefarious applications for this, and I discourage you against every one of them wholeheartedly. But if there is something, if you do have a legitimate purpose for something like this, uh, for getting back a password when an application is using it and you just have no idea what the password is, then uh, you know this is an excellent way to, uh, to be able to get that. And you can see how easy it was. I mean, I had absolutely no trouble finding this. So, you know, on to, so, so that, that's the basics. Uh, well, the basics, that's really all there is to it. There's nothing else to it than that. You just download a debugger, you attach to the SQL process, and you start searching the memory for the account until you see something that's followed by a password. You see it's just got this little uh, important app account, and then you can see right in there. So, and then you can see it connecting to master. And it may not be the first one that comes up, so you may have to search. You, you, you may have to search a... Uh, you know a few times before you actually find where the password is stored but okay so how do you do this against a production system then assuming that it's a production system you have to attach to right because th that's more than likely going to be the case well the easy answer is wait for a maintenance window and actually schedule this tell somebody that you have to uh, that you have to actually recover this password and you need to attach to SQL it's going to bring it down and set up the process to attach to SQL uh, or to, to, to connect to SQL during a maintenance window and then just capture it that way and then you don't have to worry about bringing anything down so you can actually do this offline another way to do this would be to restore your production system be it master and everything uh, especially master right to a test system and then have that application hit that test system instead because it's not really going to matter. It's going it's hitting the password, right? So it doesn't really matter, and that's a really good way to do that. Now, there are, you know, there there's some really bad uh, implications to this as far as being able to escalate privileges and all of that. Because you know, once you get here, you get every SQL password there is. And mind you, I said SQL password, right? Because remember, this doesn't work in Windows because Windows just passes around a token. It doesn't actually pass the password to every single database. Yeah, well, okay, so uh, I misspoke a little tiny bit. It's not that it doesn't work in Windows. It doesn't work for Windows passwords. It only works for SQL passwords. But assuming that we're, you know, doing this against SQL, you know, and SQL's only, SQL only works in Windows, then, uh, you know, I, I was hoping that you guys would get that. But anyway, uh, so that's all I've got. I'm going to keep this nice and short, but I just wanted to show you guys how incredibly easy it is to sniff the memory 
uh, for SQL passwords. So don't misuse it. Be good boys and girls, and we'll see you next time. Okay, sorry about this, guys, but uh, I, I got over there and started producing this video, and I realized that I got kind of caught up in the moment there and, and misspoke just a little bit. Well, not really misspoke, but kind of misled you a little bit as to uh, one of the purposes for this. So I wanted to come back on and, and explain it to you. I hate leaving a video and then coming back, but it's inevitable in this case. So what I said was that if somebody changes a password, say like a link server password or something, and you need to recover that password, that you can, uh, that you can use this method to get that password back. Well, that's, that's both true and not true. Uh, I... I you can only use this method if they're actually able to log in. So once they make a connection into SQL, then you can use this method to sniff the memory. But I don't think you can use it if they have a missed logon attempt because SQL wouldn't store them the password in memory then. There's no reason for it to. Uh, so if somebody changes a password, then you will have to have that user account on another box running in the same fashion that it is on the broken box and then uh, and then attach to the box that's working and get the password that way but if you've got you know a single user account and password running against a single server and somebody changes it and you can't get into the application to get the password you're screwed I mean that's all there is to it you, you can't get it so in order to use this method you have to be able to log in using that account from somewhere so however you contrive that is up to you I'm just saying that that uh, uh, you have to be able to log in. So I just wanted to clear that up real quick before I let y'all go.